You think you're gonna surf again? I think. I know. God gave me this passion to surf, and it wasn't like that passion had been taken too. How she's been able to adapt and be the powerhouse that she is, I don't know how she does it. She trained her butt off. It takes a lot of strength and willpower to get that one success. I didn't need easy, I, I just needed possible. Welcome one and all to the Movie Guys. Paul Preston here with you for another TMG interview. I have an extraordinary opportunity today to talk to an athlete whose life story to date is pretty much everything you want in a movie or a sports mm -hmm. movie. You know, setback, self-discovery, comeback, triumph, and it's all captured in the new documentary, Bethany Hamilton, Unstoppable, covering Bethany's uh, terrifying shark attack at 13 years old where she lost her left arm right on through her comeback both personally and professionally by both competing again tackling personal surfing goals and becoming a mother i'm thrilled to talk to bethany hamilton there she is uh good to have you so uh you're here the day before bethany hamilton unstoppable premieres tomorrow night at arc light right in hollywood so it's yeah. the big deal thing everybody's coming out you're excited yeah, yeah i'm excited <laughs> It's funny because it's been such like a build up when we first started this project. It's been almost six years, I think. So, yeah, tomorrow night I'm a little tired right now, but I'm <laughs> super pumped for tomorrow and um, just excited to get this movie out there. Yeah, I was going to ask how long it took because it seems like some of the first uh, footage they cover of you uh, getting out there and really competing again was from like 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. ish right and then moving on yeah so we got a lot of like footage collected from over the years like I naturally would just capture stuff along the way yeah. um, but we really kind of started this project I want to say just after I got married and I'm coming up on six or seven years shoots I should know <laughs> um, but yeah so it's that's, that's, I, like, yeah, that's, uh, that's the reverse of you know that yeah, it's usually the the wife who reminds the husband, hey, I we've know. been married. This but it's reverse in my house. I remember. <laughs> my wife has no idea. She's like, how long has <laughs> it been? I have to do the math for and everything. No, yeah. I, I have mom brain, too. I, like, give me that. I have two two little guys. And right, right. I would definitely say I have a bit of mom brain. Memory is not a strong point mom for me. Mom brain. Is that a thing? It is, oh, like supposedly. That. And there's, like, kind of legit good reasons, I think, behind it. Like, there's some science there. But I don't, I can't give you all that. But <laughs> I definitely don't get the right sleep I should, so. Well, you have two kids, so you picked up my slack. There, yeah. Right? <laughs> well, let's talk about this uh, Aaron Lieber. If I'm mm -hmm. pronouncing the name correctly, because I I was I wanted to see who the DP was, because right out of the gate, the shots of Hawaii and the waves, yeah. whether they look gorgeous or look menacing, were impressive. And I said, well, who shot this thing? The DP is Aaron Lieber. Then you keep looking through IMDb, and you're like, yeah, oh, he's he also like the director, and everything. he's also <laughs> the co-producer, and he's the co-writer, and you know. I guess maybe he didn't know how to edit, so he <laughs> he stopped there. <laughs> no, but he, did he a does lot. a lot of editing too. But I think he was smart enough to bring in other people to work on the editing and like team it with him. And he was there every single day along the way. So, but yeah, he's a superhuman when it comes to filmmaking. I would say, and um, yeah, for how young he is, I think he's early thirties and. Wow. This is probably his, for sure, his biggest project, but he, I think he did an amazing job of just really capturing my story to the depth and um, kind of sharing it without over saying too much, you know, mm -hmm. which to me is really important because I'm not a big talker. So the film was definitely meant to be very visual. And it like, is that. Yeah, I mean, that's why I said I lead with the with the photography. It's yeah, incredible. yeah. Yeah. So it's and of course being in the ocean, you want to capture the beauty. So yeah. Yeah, the movie <laughs> isn't is doesn't uh what would be what would be the word, I guess. It's not uh hokey or it's not um preachy. Yeah. It's uh it's a it, it has a surfer's vibe. From what I know on the outside of what a surfer is cuz I assume we're going to talk about surfing because I am the uninitiated, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but it seems to have that sort of smooth, laid back way of telling your story. Even when things are intense, it kind of just hey t it takes you in its arms and says, "Hey, we got this story. You're yeah. gonna enjoy it." And for for an hour and forty. Yeah, and I think too, we knew that we would have a very wide variety of audience, and hopefully even more than we know we're gonna have seeing it. So um, I mean, with Soul Surfer, I had so many young fans in the middle of America who know nothing about surfing. So we wanted the film to be 
like really exciting for the core hardcore like intense surfers but also the middle of americans who know nothing about surfing but can like follow the journey along the way and enjoy surfing in the ocean and like the challenges of it but also the epic ride it it brings us surfers. <laughs> Soul Surfer was a 2004, no, 2011 yeah. movie based on your 2004 book. If I yes, dates, yes. Right? Well, you okay. got that. Cool. Well, we'll talk about that other, uh, the the dramatic film of your life in a second. But sticking with the the documentary. So, so how does Aaron come aboard? Did you find him, so, or did he pitch you like I want to make this? Or? Yeah, actually, he was working on a film on my dear friend Lakey Peterson. She's a hardcore ripper out of Santa Barbara. And I went on a trip with them for her film, and I just, like, was wanting to surf, and she wanted to do a trip with me. So we went, and then I met Aaron, and he was, like, really in awe of my surfing. And he was like, dang, your surfing is good as all the best girls in the world. Like, we need to share this. So the heart of the story really began with sharing my talent in riding waves. We were setting out to just make a short film, like 12 minutes of me just pushing it in the craziest waves around the world and just doing my thing where I'm meant to be. And then we kind of like made that still yet, but put it within the overall documentary. The so. context of your beginnings. and Yeah, the, the yeah. whole the whole entire story and more than yeah. had already been told, you know. Yeah, so, that kinda, so the new footage then kind of covers what it seemed to me like you, I, I have now these goals of these specific waves or types of waves I need to conquer to show that I haven't l- l- lost a step. And just for a personal challenge right to prove it to yeah, yourself yeah and these were dreams i've had ever since i was a young girl so really going for it and making these dreams come true and he was just capturing it along the way so that was super exciting to me i mean i was just i the last thing i wanted to do really was tell my story i was just like hey if i get to go on surf trips i'm stoked because <laughs> that's just how i am I'm, I'm born and raised in hawaii i'm not about movie making but he like lured me he's like we're gonna go on surf trips all year long and we'll make a short film on you but then it turned into the documentary yeah. and and then along the way i got pregnant and then we're like <laughs> should we still keep making this story oh, come on the documentary filmmaker's like oh this is drama this yeah. is what we need this is great it twists and turns i'm like moves. calling him like <laughs> i'm pregnant <laughs> like can't even talk but um but you because you're you what four weeks after you're back in the water yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so that's my the tendency I have so long story short just continued on doing my thing after I got pregnant and sharing that journey and to me it's really exciting because there isn't any films that I know of or that I've seen on female athletes who are mothers Mm. so it's pretty unique in that sense and like I think it'll be fun for all the moms to see yeah I'm a little sad now though because I like the term hardcore ripper. I want to be one. I, th- I have a feeling now in my <laughs> life I will never be a hardcore ripper. Hey, I think you could I be. Could? How old are All you? Right. Well, I don't know if you want to share that, but <laughs> my mom. How dare one, you? One of my mom's best friends, she started surfing when she was 40, and oh, wow. she's like 60-something now, and she's like. Is she a hardcore ripper? She rips for her age. Like, she gets out <laughs> she, there every day, she age, and she, she loves age it. Age equivalent rips. She, yeah. yeah, for her age, she's a hardcore ripper. Nice. All right. Well, I won't put you it. I mean, I, here like I am in Southern California. Like, I yeah, got. I should you be have going access. Out. I know I went surfing once in Hawaii, and I burned my back so intensely. Just <laughs> with you know the going out, the paddling. Yeah. I just, I, I was, I was done for like a day. I lost a day of, of. It was Hawaii. It was yeah. Hawaii. But anyway, again, I, <laughs> we're jumping around because I could talk. I want to do want to talk surfing with you. But as far as the film goes, have you followed it around? Now, if you go to IMDb, you see that it won some awards in film festivals. San Luis Obispo, Newport Beach, which is a great fest right down the road from here. And uh, Hawaii International, so the hometown yeah, that was girl exciting. does well. So <laughs> did you do attend all of these? Did you uh, I went to, get um, to bask in those awards? Yeah, I went to some of them. I went to the Hawaii Film Festival and the Tribeca. And oh, Tribeca. Oh, they didn't list Tribeca. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and, um, but Aaron, the filmer, he went to all of them, and he's, like, updated me every second along the way, so I was definitely keeping up to date, and it was exciting to see it do well. Because you say you're not into filmmaking, but, or, you know, you're not, that's not your thing. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a hardcore ripper. But, but uh, at the same <laughs> now time, you are in filmmaking, so is yeah. this, does it sit on you well, or do you still get to get this is weird, or? Like, no, I mean, I'm embracing it for sure, I'm just not the type to 
I don't know, I'll, like, put myself in the place of, like, yes, I won this, I won that, right. like, you know? <laughs> Your face, Meryl Streep, right. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, no, I'm really super stoked, and especially winning in Hawaii got me really pumped. Yeah, yeah. Did everybody come out? Did all yeah, you and, and then I recently saw that uh, documentary Free Solo, and the guy oh, who it's such a great movie. Yeah, the guy who um, Alex Honnold gave us our no no oh, no I'm not sorry. him, but the guy who I'm gave us our award in Hawaii like compared my film to Free Solo, so oh, I was wow. like, oh my gosh, that's so rad. So yeah, hopefully people are just really pumped. Hey, on there's it. there's there's danger in both those films. I mean, Free Solo is just a, a nail biter. You you know, hands on the edge of your seat and you gotta pull your fingernails out of the armrests yeah. when you're done because it's so <laughs> intense but uh some of the early shots of these waves i mean you just see them kind of curl over and you just see surfboards flying in 10 different directions and bodies flying in 10 different directions yeah. of, of this this wave that will not be tamed and you're talking about oh, this is one of the ones i'm gonna go get i guess what it was called the uh jaws uh, jaws yeah, yeah. <laughs> jaws that's not intimidating at all yeah <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has its own sort of jaws that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, going into that sort of a wave, your mindset definitely has to be like kind of cocky, a little bit of a like confidence going there. So, but I think too, I built up on years and years of preparation for mm -hmm. surfing that sort of a wave. And I have a solid breath hold of like four minutes. That's static, static, static breath hold of four minutes. So no kidding. Just being, wow. going into those sort of situations with like, I got this confidence and, but also like had the team to rescue me if need and got my own little like life safety jacket thing that I can pull. It's like made by the Navy SEALs or something oh, wow. that I wear. So I'm like able to pull that at any second and just brings me to the surface. So. They interview one of the water safety guys, I guess for lack of a better word, he runs around on the jet ski and grabs people who need grabbing out of the water yes and even he was like i, I don't even what are we doing here this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> like he was like out of these raves are nuts and everything you know uh, but then you know he he's there when you need him but but even he was a little freaked out by some of these waves so what are the kinds you got to get the the jaws is is known for its height yeah it's size and power it's just a huge wave and full of immense power so that's pretty nuts. And and then from there, um, another wave that I've always been drawn to is Chopu in Tahiti. Is that it's the one like that sort of curves over, right? The really over, thick right? one. And it's hard to understand maybe, but like for those of you who don't know, but the wave literally isn't high because it just eats underwater. Like it goes underwater and there's just no nothing below it but a few feet of water. But just like the, the thickest wave like you can fit cars inside this huge <laughs> barrel so the goal with that is to get inside the huge barrel yeah and ride <laughs> and as long as you can is that what yeah. you go for like <laughs> as long distance? as you can preferably yeah. make it out of the wave but yeah some you win some you lose some yeah the and so ocean you go, usually wins in the end you and you know? go to but four or five of these in the film right trying to knock them all off your your list yeah and then yeah there's other goals and challenges along the way like there's a workout montage if you were wondering if this is a, a sports movie <laughs> there's a workout montage yeah you know set to music that's like the first time we get i think a real song even in the in the yep. score and you get you get you get your rocky you know running through the <laughs> the russian mountains type of uh, workout montage which is great um so at the, and this is a thing we have now in movies at the end you just see like thousands of kickstarter supporters names fill the screen mm -hmm. uh, were you involved in that at all or did you just kind of one day see the list and go wow i no, am yeah. i am humbled <laughs> or how did it all for sure work? making starting the film that was how we got started really was um filming or launching the kickstarter just to get the finances to make the film and so yeah it's just amazing to think of like all the people behind starting this project and how far it came and we are pretty independent the whole way through making the film. Um, Aaron, my husband, and I were kind of like a three-man team the first at least half of making the film, and then eventually we raised a little more money to like finish the film. <laughs> That's but yeah, how it, it works. was pretty daunting, and, it, and it, it, but it was nice to keep it small because we didn't have so many different opinions coming in, like trying to get their point yes, across. Yes. Like not, we didn't have <laughs> the, the problem of too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. And so for me, that felt really good, just being like an island girl and not having to deal with these big time producers, no, I so see to that, say. I see that in many films. A friend of mine in, uh, 
you know, is edits films and and some a lot of these indie docs will go to people and get their opinions. And yeah. it's like, well, make your movie. Yeah. You know, then get the opinion. Like I say, make make the film. If you're, you're really a director with a vision, you make your film instead of getting all these opinions along the way. And it's, I understand if something's like really out, <laughs> really just yeah. a, a wreck. But most of the time, it's just it, it. These opinions can change the overall texture or plot line of a. Uh, even if it's a doc, there is technically a plot. It's a story you're telling. You know, yeah. so it, and it just changes it all. I, I'm always for the director's vision. You know. Yeah, and so the fewer I think cooks, the better. Too, and we, I mean, we got the film down to three hours. I was involved in the editing process a bit, and so we got the film down to three hours, and we got a few opinions just to kind of like help guide us along. And but mostly, we just stuck with our gut and shared what we wanted to share. So seems to be working. So let's talk about being a mom then. You go back in the water just like four months after you have, or four weeks after you have a kid. So is is there pushback from anybody, from doctors, from... Yeah, I mean... Your husband seems like behind you 100%. Yeah. He's like the greatest guy in the world. I think it was closer to five weeks. You know, I tried to stick to like, you know, the six-week kind of plan. I think I was like dabbling with swimming a little sometime once I was like... I was, you know, I'd still listen to my body and... I did heal and I took it really easy the first like two months I would say but then I was kind of dabbling with surfing a bit um about four or five weeks after and yeah I had my like integrative health doctor who knows me and my body really well I'd go to him see him like just talk about things and he'd help guide me along the way and are nope. there other challenges in being a mom since filming stopped? Like you're done with the documentary and now uh, a second kid comes along and you're like, ah. Yeah, I mean, if you've had kids, there's constant challenges. Yeah. It's nonstop all day long. <laughs> but you are unstoppable. So that's <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. Some days though, I'm like laying You're like, why did I name I'm the movie like, this? <laughs> I am going to sleep and like forgetting it all. But I should have like named, <laughs> named the movie Bethany Hamilton Takes a Nap. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to live up to this thing with the kids running everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're so amazing. They are so much fun, and they have brought so much joy. And my first son was such a trooper. I mean, he has, like, 20 stamps in his passport. So this kid is just a world traveler and such a trooper. Whereas my second son, he's definitely throwing us for a loop. My husband and I are, like, staring at each other all throughout the day, like, oh, my gosh, he's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also like it's us giggling a lot. But um, yeah, it's crazy. Parenting is no joke, and you can see how it definitely like shapes your character and pushes you to the limits in some ways. <laughs> it's adorable to see your husband Adam sitting there with your first uh, child, whose name is Tobias. Tobias. Yeah. Uh, sitting there watching you surf and watching you compete. And now there'd be two kids. I know they would cut to, you're surfing, then they cut to Adam for his response. I'm sure he'd just be like running around. Yeah. Now there's two of them he's got to wrangle trying to get them both yeah. <laughs> back where they're supposed to he go. He is totally a super dad. And he's actually like a jock from his high school, college years. He so surfs too, right? Yeah, he's yeah. gotten into surfing. He's actually from Kansas. so oh, Wow, <laughs> he's that a is a transplant. epic surfer from Kansas, <laughs> wow. you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's been really fun. It's it's really cool having him along the journey or like coming alongside of me too because he understands sport. He understands like the training and the mental and everything. So he's able to like really be that companion that is m so much more than just husband, but like cheering me on in my sport endeavor and like really just being that support that I need and think like most athletes know it's so mental so much of it's mental and just believing that you can do it and that's where it starts so yeah the visualization yeah right leap in the net will appear all that stuff and i think too just like living life with one arm there's so much i could have not done like if my mind just didn't believe it or being willing to even try and so Definitely, I'm like, okay, my mind's got something going for it's it. It's got to be. You've got to be an inspiration for, <laughs> for young girls. I mean, I, I do these workout videos by a guy named Galad. Do you know who he is? Because he, I've heard he tapes of him. in Hawaii. Yeah. All of his shows are in the beach in Hawaii, and he's working nice. out. It's been 30 years he's been making these videos. And he used to have them on videotape, and now it's an app where you can just get a different one every day from, yeah. from 30 years. So it's a, you know, he's got all these videos to choose from. And he, he often has his mom behind him, <laughs> you know, and she survived cancer and now okay. she's working out. She's like, I got a wake up call and I'm working out with my son. And, and when I'm working out and I'm having trouble, I go, 
wait a minute, his mom is doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't be tired or go and have a drink. But I have to do so. That's inspiration. Uh, you're inspirational. Like you said, keep it up because uh, whoever you are, you. Bethany is unstoppable. <laughs> you can be too. Uh, but let's talk about Kauai. So that's that's the one place I visited in Hawaii. My wife yeah. and I did uh, s- six days there. You know, flew into Honolulu, jumped over to Kauai, spent the whole time there, came back home. So I haven't been to the other islands, but I feel spoiled by Kauai. It seems the Garden Isle, you know, it's a little less populated, a little less stuff going on. I know. Sorry, I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm blowing it now for everybody. <laughs> no, it's definitely a special place. There's no though. amenities. There's no toilets, so don't go there's there. No go, yeah, go to either. Yeah. So <laughs> right. you kind of shot once you get there. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. I mean, who yeah, knew there was a canyon? Yeah, it's really beautiful. There? It's super special, and there's a yeah, a mini Grand Canyon and mountains everywhere all day long. You're just driving around the island, and we do have a little traffic, so that's a bit of a a bummer. But you know, you got to deal with something. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you meet your husband? If he's in Kansas, you're in Kauai, how's it even Yeah, happen? he moved out to Kauai, like, after he graduated college, and he was living with a local family doing youth ministry. Okay. And they had plotted to keep him on the island, and they didn't want him to leave, so they are like, okay, we got to find him a wife. And I had met um, the mom of the family before, and she's like, oh, you should meet Bethany. So it was kind of a blind date. First time we connected, jumped off a 40-foot cliff, and then from there, <laughs> into the ocean. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yes. You never uh, know. People might misunderstand. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> that's unsafe. She's not the inspiration I thought she was. Yeah. No, that's, uh, wow, that's, that's your first date? That was our first hang time. I, I don't know. I guess you could call Whatever. it a date. You're jumping Whatever. off a 40-foot yeah. cliff. <laughs> With a bunch of people just by yourself. It was just us two. So it was kind of like love wow. at first jump. Yeah. I think I went to dinner in a movie with my wife. <laughs> Should have jumped off a 40-foot cliff. Wow. Yeah. And the funny thing was, like, I was a total mermaid. And I was literally, like, swimming circles around uh. him because he's this <laughs> Kansas boy. And, like, I am, like, the mermaid, like, <laughs> swimming super good. <laughs> and he's like, oh, my gosh, water for the first time. It, it, yeah. I never knew water. It could be salty, right? <laughs> Um, Okay, so let's talk about surfing. Um, Because, again, I I had a guy in here, uh, he's a good friend of mine, he's went on to make this documentary about beer called Beers of Joy. (laughs) And I don't drink a lick, right? But he's like, I'm going to bring some beer in and we'll taste it on the show. So I tasted some beers. How'd you like it? Stout, not my thing. He gave me some stout. Maybe it might have been a little too far to go for the first uh, ones. But he knew that I had... Uh, you know, a palate that kind of like sweet uh, yeah. if I'm going to try anything. I've had beer before and it was bitter and that's why I was out. Yeah. So he brought me like a blackberry beer and that was a good one. And some of the others, yeah, not so much. But the blackberry beer I really enjoyed. Anyway, total novice on the beer. Total novice on, on surfing. surfing as well. So let me ask you. So if you're going to go get Jaws, right? You want to conquer Jaws this wave. How do you know is, is it a certain time of year that Jaws appears? Or how do you find these waves? Like, again, talking to a total novice. Yeah, so there's winter, spring, summer, fall. Mm-hmm. And during the winter time is when the northern hemisphere is very alive with storms and swell action. So in Hawaii especially, we love winter time. Like, I devote my life to being home in the winter. Like, work hard in the summer, spring fall do what you gotta do but make sure you're home in the winter Mm -hmm. for the winter swells so yeah that's kind of when waves like jaws come alive it's a winter swell time and there are southern hemisphere swells too so you can like during the summer just drive to the southern side of the island and get south swells Mm. um but in the winter you mostly are surfing in the north and northeast northwest and so yeah you kind of get to know yeah, yeah time of the year and um, but yeah, it definitely would take a lot of preparation to get you out at Jaws. Yeah, no. I mean, no. we could do it if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to jump off a 40 foot cliff first, <laughs> start there. If I come out of the water, then we've accomplished that. Yeah, it's like even if you there. were physically ready, you have to be mentally ready to do that sort of thing too. So that's not, does not come to everyone ever at some point. So yeah, yeah you got to want it. <laughs> do you have a favorite board? Like, do you have a, like, like a favorite baseball bat or bowling ball do you have a favorite surfboard i mean at times you are always hunting down that magic board so but your board only lasts so long so i'm Mm. breaking boards all the time and so you're breaking them like the wave breaks them the wave breaks your piling breaks water breaks 
the surfboard. It breaks it. It snaps Damn. it in half easy. Like, wow. I know. I'm thankful I haven't been, like, severely Snapped injured by in waves. Half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, 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 wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so boards come and go. All so right. you're always kind of, like, getting new boards, especially the modern-day boards. The boards my parents used to ride probably would last a long, long time because they're so thick and solid and heavy and just hard to break. Um, but nowadays we ride a lot lighter of boards with light materials. Like my short board weighs about six pounds. So super light, easy to kind of break. Yeah, what is that material? It's not styrofoam, clearly, but it looks like that. Yeah, there's but some sort of styrofoam in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Maybe not like the styrofoam you get from like no, the store. No, not, not a coffee cup. It's like a specific sort of foam. And then you glass the outside of it with um, sometimes epoxy glass or, or no, resin, like glass resin sure shoot i should know this <laughs> more better plus there's like a wooden you don't make them so that's fine although yeah, i did like the little uh handle that you, yeah. was it your dad put on the, yeah. the so you could handle it so you yeah my dad puts a handle on my board so when i'm paddling out and you need to be able to duck dive under the wave like i would grab the middle handle and push my board under the wave so yeah it's super handy to have i love my handle so whatever board you get, that's the first thing. I usually thing. get it on. I ha like sometimes I slack off. I don't really like need it, but when the waves start to get bigger and more powerful, like the problem can be the board coming back and hitting you when you duck dive. So that's kind of like it's a safety precaution just to be able to grip my board without normally you'd grip the rails with both hands, so you're pretty sturdy, but one handing it, you just I push down in the middle. So yeah, the handle saves me from getting whacked in the face. But you do in the film. There's a shot where you take a wave and then you come up and you're bleeding. I'm like, I thought this was water. That what was do we the do? reef. <laughs> uh, see, well, there you go. Yeah, I hit the it's reef not the water that, that hits that. the ground. will hit but you. But the board does hit me. I've had like severe bruising, like huge black bruises. Like you think, like you could think some weird things, but my surfboard just hits me really hard sometimes and I've gotten several cuts where I've had to go get stitches from my fins and the board just hit its seal. It's just part of it. Do you, ever hit, do you ever hit any other surfers? Yeah, sometimes. I, <laughs> I, I mean, because sometimes I see the not, waves. But it happens. Yeah. I see the waves and there'll be like a bunch of boats sitting up there watching the surfers. I'm like, guys, get 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 away. <laughs> like, get been, off of there. I've been run over and I got 20 stitches in my leg. Eey, eey. So yeah, it happens. It's it's rare. I mean, yeah. usually you hope everyone's in control, but it happens at times. And it's funny how we kind of just like, it's almost like you're going down the line on the wave and you look at someone and you're like, oh, don't hit them. But because you're looking at them, you accidentally kind of like get too close to them. It's like the, <laughs> Stay like on you target. almost got to not look at them <laughs> yeah. to like avoid them. <laughs> and then, uh, again, I'm a movie guy. I know like point break. Yeah. Right. So point break. Uh, Patrick Swayze's character has this wave he's gotta gotta go conquer. I think he went to Australia, right, to go yeah, get it. Bell's Beach. it. Didn't go well, I don't think, right? But um, do you have something you've yet to conquer in your surfing oh, career? I'm yeah, I'm always working at things, always trying to get better. Um, I'm still working on aerial surfing, so the very performance, like where you launch off the wave oh, okay. and do tricks and like land back on the wave. So it's super hard. I'm I've like, seen you spin kind of on the top of a wave. Yeah, I remember stuff uh, like that. So I remember broadcasters going whoa in the film, saying that you spun, but you want to get airborne on top of it, like yeah. a, almost like a snowboarder. Yeah, so kind of like on the half pipe, but we aren't quite quite there with the half pipe craziness because surfing is just so different but i'm definitely setting my sights on doing some of the hardest surfing there is so that's an ongoing challenge of just working at that so after i'm in california i'm actually going to texas to surf a wave pool where they have like it's like a skate ramp you can just go and do the same thing like have the same section to like go crazy on every over and over again so i was gonna say these these uh, snowboarders have it easy right because because no, like, imagine if their half pipe changed every time they went on it, no the ocean is so yeah. hard like a, a lot of snowboarders will even tell you like the learning curve in snowboarding or er, snowboarding compared to surfing is vastly different like i got in, into snowboarding my second day down the mountain i'm like charging but it's going to take you like five years to get to that second day down the mountain in the ocean because the ocean is always moving. You're learning just to catch waves. And then once you get up, you get a three to ten second ride at most usually. So your I, learning curve is incredibly short and slow. 
Hey, when I'm on the lift watching snowboarders, I just see them going. Yeah. I'm like, these guys are just falling down all the time. What fun is that? But still, they're still getting a little ride. Like compared to a wave, you have to paddle back out, get back out there, plus deal with all the people. And it's like crazy how. I think of building a lift so to take the surfers out. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They're creating man-made waves now. So there's these man-made waves where you're literally getting so many waves in an hour. You're oh, catching. but not in the ocean. No, no. you're in a pool. So right, you're right. getting green hair from the chlorine and <laughs> That's a you're, you're missing the ocean a little bit yeah. but then you're having a blast at the same time it's yeah. pretty crazy that's just for fun do they compete with that they're starting to they do, do competition mm. yeah they're even trying to get the surfing olympics to be at a wave pool in japan this next japan japan's gonna be the first surfing olympics so it's pretty insane is surfing in the actual olympics yeah oh, okay i thought this so. is the first year first year 2020 oh, so olympics in japan Surfing has Tokyo. not been in the Olympics until this year. No. Oh, wow. Even though it's like the most incredible sport there is. <laughs> but for some reason, the ocean was just too much for the Olympic committee to deal with. I guess you have to in you have to include it in whatever city you get. Like yeah. LA could do so it because you get on to San Clemente, right? Yeah. You or you just make a wave pool. Yeah. So now the Olympics could literally be held anywhere, the Summer Olympics, and we just make a wave pool. Have you been to waves in Japan? Or are they... Anything? I'm a little nervous about the waves for the Olympics, but I'll stop there. <laughs> oh, okay. But you haven't been, to, you haven't been <laughs> surfing in Japan? I have been Japan. to Japan. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it has its moments, but I'm a little nervous for the Olympics to have good waves, you know. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it's pretty amazing to have surfing in the Olympics. The whole surfing world is just, woo! <laughs> cool. I had no idea that was yeah. a, that would be the first time. Uh, so let's go to Soul Surfer then real quick. Um, what was your involvement in the film outside of obviously it's based on your book? Did then people say we want this to be a film and you're involved or we want to be a film? Uh, we get the rights and see you or how did it all go? Cause yeah, I, 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 it was actually my agent at the time, Dutch Hofstetter. He was like, we need to make your life into a movie. So he started pitching it and he was into okay. film already. But I was just like along for the ride, you know, I was only a teenager at that point. So and I was just a surf rat. And yeah, so eventually things kind of came together and we ended up making Soul Surfer and my whole family and I were involved in the whole process of making that film. And yeah, if we weren't the film, I don't think it would be as good as it turned out. And at least I think it turned out pretty dang good. And it really stuck true to our story for, you know, Hollywood actor sort of a film. Um, I haven't seen it. I hope it lives up to the real life story in the doc you know? yeah <laughs> i really hope i mean i've heard young teenage girls give feedback and they're oh, like great. i liked unstoppable better and these are like little girls that watch soul surfer like 50 times the oh, kind nice. like the, those super fans so that was pretty exciting to hear i think a lot of young girls are craving real life like superheroes so to say nowadays not that i like think of myself like that but like I'm just stoked to get my story out there for all those young girls that may be struggling to believe in themselves and hopefully they can see what I do and go do their own version of that. So Cool. And you picked Anna Sophia Robb, didn't you? Yeah, I picked Anna Sophia. You? So that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, I guess I could be a casting director if surfing fell short. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Anna Hey, you're Sophia. one for one. And then, but I was so disappointed because I met her and I'm like almost pushing six foot tall and she was like not quite up to my shoulders and I was planning on doing all my stunt surfing, but then all of a sudden there's this like size gap that was just really hard to bridge, but I ended up doing a lot of my own stunt surfing anyway for Soul Surfer, so that was oh, nice. fun and yeah, it was good to just do my own surfing, of course. Cool. Um, and 47 million on an $18 million budget. It's a hit. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, well I wish done. I made some of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tomorrow night is the premiere, and by the time this airs, uh, I mean, it, it'll only be like a day or two. I think I'll get this out midweek, and then it'll be a day or two, and Yay. this will, it will be in theaters. Yeah. Uh, you know, followed by a VOD, but go see it in the theaters because the story's great, but the photography's incredible. And that was one reason to see Free Solo in the theater, which I did in IMAX. And just, you know, yeah. my eyes popped out of my head. I don't know where you saw it, but also Dolby did the sound for Unstoppable, which they haven't oh. really done any sound for documentaries. So Dolby did the full sound for the whole film. So if you guys can see it oh, in I a Dolby a screener, theater. So I'll have to go again. And yeah, see it the, I know. I actually haven't seen it in a Dolby theater yet. I've only seen it in just a regular one. Oh, cool. So I'm pretty excited to hopefully go see it in a Dolby sound theater and 
yeah, I heard it's just crazy. The waves are like crashing around you. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm still such a wave fan, so I'm excited. To I, it's hear amazing it. how the how the you are there feel without effects. You know, yeah. like you, you you could put a you could do anything in the movies now where you could run a camera in through a wave and out the other side. You know, it's just computerized water, computerized actor. Computer, yeah, and it's all a fake. But the the you are there feel of some of these shots when you're out competing, uh, just crazy how they got cameras like <laughs> all around you yeah. on your board and, the, and, and in the water it seems you hit the water and there's a camera underneath getting you i was yeah. just super impressed so yeah, there's tons of coverage and it looks great so Thank big screen you. time for this one uh before i let you go though i need to ask you what i ask everyone who comes on the show what is your favorite movie of all time oh that's a good question um uh, i <laughs> it's kind of a random film i don't know if it, people will know of it but I always had a sweet spot for um, the movie Simon Birch. Have Simon you seen Birch, it? yeah. I have yeah, not seen it, but I know the movie you're talking about. It has the cutest about. little story, and it's just really funny. And yeah, I don't know why. I just really like that film. No, it, it, it's <laughs> uh, hey, movies are they're subjective. It's each. You never know what's gonna hit. I I yeah. went and I cried at Palms. Do you know this movie about oh, the old ladies no. who want to be cheerleaders? Old no. ladies who want to be cheerleaders. <laughs> Diane Keaton and. Some other actresses, you know, Ray Perlman from Cheers, you yeah. know, they're, they're in a nursing home. They decide to be cheerleaders. By the end, I'm going, why am I, what, <laughs> what's going on? Come on, movie, this is not right. That shouldn't be happening, but yet, yeah. Simon Birch. I think Simon Birch, it has like a really sweet, like, kind of message to it. But also there's some comedy in there, which I tend to like veer towards comedy. But then it's pretty clean. And there's also some heartbreak in there. And it's just, it's a cute film. Well, that's good that the movie even got you without any familiar actors in it yeah yeah Yeah. i think i wonder i don't know yeah yeah that's cool well good (laughs) for the good on that movie all right well that uh that wraps another tmg interview follow us on twitter at the movie guys on facebook uh at the movie guys as well instagram all that nonsense youtube itunes or apple Podcasts, as it's being called now uh all that nonsense for daily jokes articles media links and more thanks to bethany hamilton and that's bethanyhamilton.com unstoppable the film.com and it's uh, on Facebook. Here it is. On, on Facebook and Instagram, it's Unstoppable the Film. On Twitter, it's Unstoppable Film. Yeah. So they, they get things here and there that you, you, you can get them, but you can't get them. But basically, just search it. You're going to find yeah. it because it's all the rage right now. It comes out this weekend. Yeah, um, any other plugs you need to make? No, for stuff thank you guys out? so much. Thanks, Paul. It's been fun chatting. I have fun at the premiere tomorrow. And as ever, you can find everything we're up to at uh, themovieguys.net. Thanks, Bethany. Yahoo! So wait, what's your favorite film? Oh, that's easy. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ooh, okay. I gotta go watch it again. Oh, yeah. See, that one, that's half (laughs) the fun of... My hubby's probably a nerd for that one, too. Well, that's that's half the fun of what your favorite movie of all time is, is determining how it could possibly be your favorite movie of all time. For me, that's excellence plus time. That movie's been with me 30 plus years. I mean, that much time, it's like nothing's gonna top it. You could put out a great movie right now, and as great as it is, I don't think it's gonna take years for it to yeah, take yeah. over Raiders of the Lost Ark. I like that. I feel like a lot of movies nowadays are not timeless like that. So it's interesting. Hard to find the timeless films. I agree with you. Yeah. Well said. What a great note to go out on. <laughs> she has the brilliant movie line to go out on. And I'm the movie guy. But hey, there you go. Bethany, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>